Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Esther here. This morning, we're going to continue our study of the book of 2 Peter. We are in 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to be reading and talking about uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 11. And this is what it says. It says, His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these, he has given us very great and precious promises, so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be richly supplied to you. Now, there are so many gems in this passage of scripture, and time does not permit us to break everything down. But if we were to just summarize this few passages of scripture, first, I just want to remind us of the Apostle Peter's um the things that he talks about, right? His 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 main point is regarding how we can live as believers, or more importantly, how we should live as believers. When we went through the book of First Peter, we saw that the Apostle Peter, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was always doing two things. He was reminding us of the salvation that we have gained through Jesus Christ and telling us that as a result of this great gift of eternal life, this is how we should respond. And he has not strayed away here in Second Peter. In fact, he goes even further, um, as we can see in verse 3, to make a very strong and important point. And that is that God, in his divine power, has given us everything that is required for life. And that life is everything that's required for us to live a life that is pleasing unto God, a life of spiritual righteousness, a life that beckons and calls others to follow Jesus Christ. And this comes through the knowledge of Christ who himself called us in his own glory and goodness. He goes on to say in verse four that we have been given a very great and precious promises that allow us to share in the divine nature. And what is this very great and precious promise first and foremost it is the receipt of the holy spirit god himself that dwells within us as we accept jesus christ as our lord and savior so we have within us access to god and his power that enables us to live a life that is pleasing to God, which we are called to do as the apostle Peter said earlier in his letter that we should be holy as God is holy. And he goes deeper here, letting us know that, hey, this is possible because we have the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, we can um, share in God's divine nature and we can escape the corruption that is in this world because of evil desires. Those evil desires are from our sinful nature. And so this is really, really great news. This gives should give you and I confidence knowing that whatever we pass through in this life, we can be steadfast in our pursuit of Christ and we can be steadfast in living for Christ Jesus. He goes on to say, for this reason, we should make every effort. That means as much as depends on us, we should do and put in the work to supplement our faith um, with goodness and goodness with knowledge, right? What is that knowledge? Continual to grow, continuing, excuse me, to grow in the knowledge of God and Christ Jesus. And how do we do that? By being in the word, by constantly 
reading the word, meditating the word, um, memorizing scripture, all of these things we need to continually do. Um, he goes on to say that with knowledge, self-control, practicing self-control, knowing that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit who lives within us and we have his fruit within us, one of which is self-control, self-control with endurance, being able to persevere, being able to endure when life is going through all the ups and downs, when we pass through challenges that are unfavorable to us in those moments, to sit steadfast in our faith and in the knowledge of who God is and his very great promises, another one of which is the promise of eternal life, the promise of knowing that in eternity we will be in his presence. And so with endurance, we have godliness, living holy and righteous, right? Making sure that as we are in this corrupt world, we do not take on the patterns of this world, but we take on the pattern of Christ. And then with godliness, brotherly affection, right? We're not just righteous, but we love our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. And that brotherly affection should come with love. He says that if we continue to do the work to increase in this qualities, we will not be useless and unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Basically meaning that we will be an effective tool in the hands of God to propagate his kingdom. We'll be an effective tool in the hands of God to be used to reach others for Christ Jesus. We'll be an effective tool in the hands of God to bring forth his purposes on the earth. So this means that if we're not being diligent in these things, then we will be useless and unfruitful, which is why he says in verse nine, the person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Basically meaning that any person that is refusing or is lackadaisical in the pursuit of these things has forgotten the crux of Jesus's work on the cross. They have forgotten the beauty and the glory and the splendor of their salvation. They have forgotten the amazing work that Christ has done for you and I. And this is why it is so important that the cross and the work of the cross must be at our forefront daily because through it, it um, imbibes our heart to follow Christ, to work, to love him, to do and put in the effort to take on goodness and knowledge and self-control and brotherly affection and love. And then he ends this section of scripture saying that you and I must make every effort to confirm our calling and election, meaning that you and I need to live out our life in a way that confirms that we were called and chosen by God to be in his fold, to be about a, a part of the family of Christ. And if we do this, we will never stumble. If we are steadfast in these things, we will live a life that is pleasing to God. We will live a life that's above reproach. We will live a life that represents Christ well to a world that is in need of seeing the light of Jesus Christ. And at the end of it all, when we are steadfast in these things, there's a great reward. And that reward is really our homecoming. At the time when God says, hey, your moment is done here on the earth, it says that, we will receive an entry um, in verse 11 says, for in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be richly supp supplied to you. I love the version of scripture that says that you will receive a grand entrance into the kingdom of God. You know, it reminds me of um, Hebrews 11, 6, that says God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And one of the rewards of us being diligent in our pursuit of Christ and living for Christ and following and being obedient to the edicts of Christ is this jubilant and um, another version says an abundant 
welcome into eternal life. So I want to encourage you as I am um, challenging myself that number one, I need to recognize that God really has empowered me and equipped me to live righteously. Number two, I have a responsibility to be diligent in my pursuit of the things of God. Because when I do that, I am indeed affirming that I have been chosen and elected by Christ. And in doing so, I become useful in the master's hand.